Hello, welcome to Citizens Forum. It is Wednesday, May the 22nd. I'd like to start by thanking the volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this program happen every couple of weeks on community television. Um, we're going to start the show with the Will and Jack show in honor of the Walt and Jack show. And Will, what are we going to start off with? Well, I think uh, let's talk about media first, Jack. <laughs> I, that's one of your favorite topics, so let's, uh, let's yeah. just go is this, there. Is this scripted or what? Um, yeah, so media. I think that Canada and British Columbia and Victoria so desperately need a media that is independent of corporate ownership. Basically, there's eight corporations, in, eight, maybe ten, that own every television station in the country, every radio station in the country, every newspaper in the country, uh, and more. The books, a lot of music. And it's powerful. So take GMOs, for example. Why do we have GMOs in Canada? I mean, do we want GMOs? But in part, we got them because our political system is totally corrupt. But the other part is that the media doesn't talk about it because they're tied in. The media is the corporation. And it's, in my opinion, it's just really damaging our country and taking us away from where we should be. So, I mean, you go down, around downtown and there's an increasing number of people who are just totally out of control, right? Because it's being created, this poverty and dereliction is being deliberately created by the people who run the country. They're making money. Well, it works for them, let's put it that way. They want a housing shortage so they can push up house prices and rents, which is what they've done. But if you're going to have a real housing shortage, then you've got to have a shortage. That means the people at the bottom are living on the street. And that's what they've done to us, our leaders. And the media is a part of it because they don't talk about it, unless I'm completely wrong about all of this, which is also possible. Um, we could easily fund for, for, let's say, six million dollars, so let's say six to seven million dollars a year in British Columbia. We could fund an independent media that would save us billions. And just one small example, we currently owe to the independent power producers, I think it's about 50 billion dollars that in long-term contracts that the British Columbia government has signed over the last 10 years or 15 years. Um, to buy power from these independent power producers. We don't need the power, and in fact now we're even paying them sometimes not to sell us the power, but we're locked into $50 billion worth of these contracts. And the reason we don't know about it is because they own the media. So if, if we had, you know, and really for 6 to $7 million a year, we could fund an independent media that would save us billions, and that would, even the government would, would create the grant, but they would not control where it goes. The public would control where it goes. It's an idea put forward by an American economist many years ago. It's a good idea. So that's media. I'll stop there. Okay. Uh, well, I, I have to say... you wanted to talk about... Oh, I wanted to talk, I want to just say that I think that what we're seeing with media, it may not be apparent yet, but I really do see the, the shift in media is towards individuals. So, in other words, people are putting what they, what they see on YouTube. Yes. And I get a lot of stuff off of YouTube. I don't, I don't have a TV subscription anymore, and I, I'm pretty much uh, get my news from the Internet. And I have to be careful with that because you can get anything you want on the Internet. <laughs> but, but the other thing that, that I'm finding is that there's just so much news right now with all the different things going on that it's hard to sort it all out. What's really important to me and uh, what's important to my life? Because, I mean, there's so much, there's so much geopolitical. I, I just wanted to mention, you know, we've got conflict now. Uh, it looks like Venezuela, Iran, and we've got a trade war with China seemingly heating up. And then I don't, I, Russia and Syria, there, there are things going on. And I can't pay attention to all of it. It's too much for me. I can't, I can't even digest half of it anymore. And so, I, I want to talk today with, uh, with Nick Poeta, my guest, about how we can refocus, relocalize. Because really, if you think about it, I'm not going to be able to do anything personally that, that will uh, 
help with Iran or Venezuela. Or, I mean, I've just got to sort of keep that in my mind that this, these things are going on and that things are that, that the turmoil is increasing. But really, I'm better I'm better uh, serving my own community by engaging with the people who are right around rather than trying to solve those problems. I think we've gone off the cliff now, and uh, you know the. My point is that the politicians, who are the, the ones who are at the highest level, have little or nothing to do with our lives. I mean, as long as you, you keep your, you know, you do the basic things, the things that are important, they're not paying attention to or they're actively getting in the way of the, you know, the, the G, as you point out, the GMO, things like that. And so I think that all of us need to shift and stop looking at these, pay, paying so much attention to these people who are, have not been working in our best interests. And we're going to hear about from Sharon about 5G, which we're just we're just guinea pigs about. So what we really need to do is worry about ourselves and our families and the, our loved ones, our neighborhoods. And if we can just shift our attention instead of looking at all these guys who are not working for us, they're working for corporations. It's very clear their agenda has to do with allowing corporations to make more money, right? I mean, did we see that in Alberta recently? You wanted to mention that. You, might, uh, you brought oh, that right. to my attention. So, so just tell us about that. What's going on in Alberta that we're not hearing about? You've got a, we've got a fire going yeah. on, right? So and right now, I mean, this, so this, is, uh, this is May 22nd. The, there are many big fires burning in Alberta. Um, the small city, the town of High River has been evacuated. Um, they're talking about British Columbia again being covered by smoke this summer. Uh, the United States is just being pummeled. But anyways, in Alberta, so they've got these fires. The new government has just been elected. Jason Kenney is the new premier and he's been giving it to all the rest of us, you know, fighting, he says, for the working people of Alberta, which is an outright lie. He's fighting for the oil corporations of Alberta. That's who Jason Kenney works for. But his thing has been, the first thing we're going to do when we come in is get rid of the carbon tax because it's so bad. Okay, fair enough. So now Alberta is ablaze at this moment and the government is just coming in and they're going to get rid of the carbon tax, but there's not one politician or media outlet in the country that is kind of making that case that, hey, Jason, you know, y you're saying there's no problem here, but your province is not only poisoned from top to bottom and not only bankrupt by these oil companies, but you know everybody's lives are in mortal danger. And who are you really representing? So, well, I, I want to just say that uh, with th these things going on, if we sit in front of our television sets and listen to it and say, oh yes, this is a very interesting debate, then we're going <laughs> to... We're going to be in serious trouble because obviously some people are not paying attention and they're not, and they're not at the lower levels. The, mo the people who are not paying attention and who should be are at the higher levels. So instead of worrying about that, I'm just going to be worrying about how to shield myself from 5G radiation because I, I, just, I mentioned this on the last show. I confirmed this. A friend of mine moved 10 miles from the nearest town to get because he's electrosensitive and he can't stand any electro, uh, radi elect EMF electromagnetic uh, radiation, and he's still got a thousand uh, microwatts per square meter in his, in his place, and he can't even figure out where it's going from, so he's just spending lots of money buying shielding, and then uh, <laughs> these know, things, people, we're going to have to take care this. of ourselves. We are yeah. going to have to learn to take care of ourselves and, and make gardens and build our own shielding and everything else, because we're, they're not taking care, they're not doing things that are in our best interest. And we don't have to break any laws or revolt or do anything else. We just have to do our daily job and then and, and make sure that we're taking care of ourselves and our neighbors. And I, I really want to focus on that. And in fact, I, I want to make a, a commitment to, uh, on my segments, to not just exposing the underbelly of the beast, but but rather, how can we survive? That is the, that is the real question. That's the... the uh, it's the elephant in the living room that we're not talking about. And there, there are books coming out now about how to make resilient neighborhoods, how to, how to make permaculture in our cities. And there are some cities that are doing it. I really want to focus on that.
So I'm answering your, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm saying, I'm not answering your things, your questions in the, in the way that is a, an answer, but it's, well, what I want, view. what I want is to help build the government structure that will allow all of that to happen and replace the government structure that we have today, which is exactly the greatest enemy of all of that. And to me, the answer is just democracy. It's so simple. So, you know, I wanted to talk a bit about how we make decisions. Oh, if yes. you take, for example, the decision to go ahead with LNG and the fracking, or the decision on Site C, or the decision that we will have homelessness and high house prices and high rents, because that's a decision that the same as, as all the other decisions. So the way we make decisions now is the politicians have all the power. Mm -hmm. And that should not be the way, in a democracy, governments work. The politician's job should be to make sure we're informed and we know what's going on. And then they should go out and find out what the public wants, which is very doable, and then try their best to do that. And I think if we had that kind of governing, governing structure, the ideas you have, would be exactly what comes to fruition because I think that's what people want. But as it is, our governments are controlled by the one percent of the one percent, and they're our greatest enemies. Well, okay, I, my my, uh, I, I agree with you. I, my position is, uh, Carolyn and I were driving around. We we drove around on a Sunday, and there were four people in a little sort of a traffic island. It was just a little unused piece of of right. uh, ground that had grass on it. Right. And they had a sign on it and said, right. somebody has to do something. And they were planning it right. with, with uh, you know, n something besides grass. Right. And I just right. thought, that is the perfect picture of what has to happen. Every, instead of just saying, let those guys take care of it. They're professionals. They know what they're doing. I don't think they know what they're doing. I don't think they're paying attention. I really, I know they think they're doing, I, I've been in industry, I know how industry works and how industry plans things and then, and then gets it through you know, they buy uh, legislators and they, and they have lobby, I mean, they buy uh, lobbyists, not legislators. Oh, but, they buy uh, the legislators. And, and they get things through. I mean, I've done it. I've written computer programs from what a lawyer has told me to write for a program that's going to be implemented, uh, implemented in law. So I know how it works. It's not from grassroots movements saying, hey, we need this. It's from people at the top saying, you need this. So I, I just think it's not going to change by voting. <laughs> That's the only thing. I think it's going to change by people getting their shovels out and making gardens. Yes. And by people also getting their pitchforks out, <laughs> I guess, and getting democracy. And that's what I don't want. <laughs> I, don't want to, I don't want revolution, but I guess that maybe well, that's evolution. what it takes. Put the pitchforks down yeah. and we'll have evolution. But what do you do when, when the other side just, they don't, I mean, they don't care. They're going to, uh, profit is all they care about. So. Well, I'll just say what Don Morris said. The answer is more love. What's the question? Okay. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. I'm Will, done. thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.